Greetings. This is Doc Ock here, coming at you live and direct tonight with the story of the evening, one that'll be hard for you even to be believing. Benjamin Banneker's Golden Legacy. That is the story of the evening. But before we get to that, we got a few things to do. Let's go ahead and read, first of all, our... Um, Let's deliver our proverb of the day. And the proverb of the day is one I just wrote a few minutes ago. And it goes like this. Fish have schools, lions have pride, but none of them have to ride a bus, a car, or a train to school. Hmm. Fish have schools, lions have pride, but none of them have to ride a bus, a car, or a train to school. Just something to think about for all you little children out there and you parents thinking about your children going, quote unquote, back to school in a few short days. Fish have school, lions have pride, but none of them have to ride a bus, a car or a train to school. Think about it. Don't stink about it. Next up, we're going to read a uh, what I call an extra. And this one is on uh, one of the black mayors of Washington, D.C., by the name of Walter Washington. Now, I'm not familiar with the man either, so you're going to learn about him just like I do, all at the very same time. Now, let's see just who was Walter Washington. On September 29th, 1967, Walter E. Washington was sworn in as the commissioner of our nation's capital and thereby became the first black quote unquote, mayor of a major American city. Now that's, you have to keep in mind there that Washington DC is not actually totally run by the mayor or by a city council, but rather by the, um, the US Congress, okay? And that's why they still don't have all the rights. People that live in DC still don't have all the rights that people have in every other state because it's a, it's not a state, but it's a district, a district of Columbia. Washington was born April 15, 1915 in Dawson, Georgia, and was raised in Jamestown, New York. In 1938, he received his bachelor's degree in public administration from Howard University and attended American University's graduate school. In 1941, he joined the staff of the National Capital Housing Authority and rose steadily to become its chairman in 1961. During that time, he gained a law degree by attending Howard University at night and was admitted, admitted to practice before the Supreme Court. Walter Washington also served his community as the president of the Washington Urban League and later became the chairman of the New York City Housing Authority. The United States Congress through the House and Senate district committees control many of the affairs of the district. However, the appointment of quote unquote Mayor Washington as the district's chief executive by President Johnson and the president's reorganization plan have given the citizens of Washington renewed hope of realizing home rule, which to this day they still don't have. Mayor Washington is an excellent administrator and with new, the new powers of his office faces the difficult tasks that confront him with optimism and a desire to administer programs for the good of all people. Okay, well, like I said, that little experiment is still ongoing because as of today, he has yet to be able to, uh, the mayor of DC has yet to be able to actually run the city. The city is still controlled by the Congress. The story that unfolds on the following pages tell us of just a few of the great accomplishments of Benjamin Banneker. And you see a picture here of him as a surveyor. Okay, that's a, he's that's him surveying. You've seen people like that on the highway. They're not dressed all fancy like that, but they'll be on the highway and they'll have a tripod like this with a little thing on top. And what they're doing is they're uh, lining out roads. They're uh, making sure that, you know, 
they're, they're checking to see where the boundaries are. So this is a surveyor's a piece of equipment for surveyors. This is what the map makers use. They use this, that kind of equipment to make maps, not Google Maps. These are the old style maps. Then he also laid out the city of D.C. He was the one that drew the plans to create the whole city of Washington, D.C. And then you see here he made the first clock. Um, the first clock made in America was made by a black man. And that's it. That's a picture of his clock. And then over here, you see, he also wrote an almanac because he was familiar with the stars and the heavens. Now, where did he go to school? That's what we're going to find out as we read through this book. Where did he go to school? The year 1743, 12-year-old Benjamin Banneker cuts ripe tobacco leaves on his family's Maryland farm. Greetings, lad, says the man on the horse. You have a good crop. How can this be when we've had no rain? Well, we direct the water from our streams through ditches and locks to flood our fields, just as my grandfather did in Africa. But don't worry, it'll rain soon. I know the signs. My name is Peter Heinrich. My name is Benjamin Banneker, and this is my family's farm. You have the finest tobacco in Elk Ridge. May I buy some slips for planting? You'll have to see my father about that. After Robert Banneker sold him the slips, Banneker, you have a bright boy. Send him to my school and I'll teach him to read. Oh, he can read, but he hungers for more learning. I'll send him. Fine, I'll be expecting him. Ben learned quickly. He remembered everything he read. While the other children played, Ben studied. He became such a whiz at math that local farmers came to him for help. Ben worked hard on the family farm, and by 1750, Ben, you're almost 20 years old. It's time you took on the business end of farming. Okay, Pa, let me take some of the crops into Baltimore. Now, hold on just a minute, son. Okay, I said some. I didn't say everything. With those slavers stalking the river, says his mom, you could be captured and sold into slavery. I'll carry my free papers. I don't know. They may not buy from you, but Pa, our tobacco is the best. If the inspectors buy any tobacco, it has to be ours. The next day, he gets the wagon all packed up with the ox, uh, the ox drawn wagon all packed up, and his dad and his mom wave him off, saying, Remember everything I told you, son at the tobacco warehouse in Baltimore, Maryland. You're practically stealing our tobacco, says Ben. The king says we can. What tobacco we don't approve for sale, we can burn. Oh, no, Ben didn't say that. These are the, the white farmers are saying this. You approve the big landowner's tobacco quick enough, but we small planters suffer. Ben walks in. Well, 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 what have we here? You doing business for your master, boy? Me? I'm a free man. Oh, so you're a free man. Let me see your papers, boy. He's a free man, all right, from my town with the best tobacco in Elk Ridge. That's right. Hmm. Here, take this for your tobacco. And he throws some papers, slips of paper on the ground. My tobacco's worth 20 times this amount. You can't better hush, Ben. I'll show you what I can do. Toss him out of here. They're setting fire to my tobacco. It is hard to bear, but they are unfair to others, too. My name is William Qualls. I'm a merchant. Come with me and share your troubles. I'm Benjamin Banneker from Elk Ridge. At Qualls' home, Mr. Banneker met meet Mr. Joseph Levi, also a merchant. Pleased to meet you. I share your misery over unfairness and bondage. My people were slaves too. Oh, it's the white guy telling the black man about his people were slaves. I am not a slave, but slave or free. Men have no right to steal our labors. In time, in time, says uh, Mr. Levi. So this is Joseph Levi's watch. Is that a timepiece, he asked? Yes, it's a watch. I've never seen a watch or a clock, though we helped build a sundial for our school. Could you explain to me how it works? Well, I, uh, I'll do better than that. I'll lend you the watch, then you can study its movements. Now, what did he think Benjamin was going to do with that watch? I don't know. But what did he do with the watch? Back home, 
The episode with the crops is soon replaced in Ben's mind by the watch. Later that evening, hello, Mr. Heinrich. Ben, come in. Ben tells Peter Heinrich of his interest in the watch. The key is in how the watch works, moves. If I could discover how this force works, I could make other things move in the same way. You could make a clock that chimes the hour and we wouldn't have to import them anymore. Yes, surely there are rules, formulae. I don't have such knowledge, but here's an almanac, a book on geometry, and another by Sir Isaac Newton. Perhaps you can use them. Ben worked hard, reading everything, measuring, taking the watch apart carefully and sketching its parts, enlarging them and carving every piece but the sounding device out of wood until he built his own clock that chimed. When he got it done, he took it back and showed his teacher, Mr. Heinrich, and he says, you're a genius. Dear Ben, truly a genius. Soon, since Ben built that clock, people have come from all over Philadelphia and New York to see it. That's the first wooden clock ever made in the colonies, probably the first clock ever built by an American. Now, Ben was not only the local mathematician, but also the star mechanic. On a plantation visit to fix an imported clock, there's Anola sneaking a ride on the master's horse. And Ben thinks to himself, gone. she's the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. On his many visits, they fell in love. Anola, will you be my wife? You forget I'm a slave. I'm property, Ben. Hmm. She's pretty well dressed in that, that red dress for a slave. Ben visits Anola's slave master. Sir, I've come to buy one of your slaves to be my wife. The slave master says, <laughs> my slaves aren't for sale. Get out. So Ben formed a plan to free Anola. I will come for you tonight. That night, the master set out the dogs. Run, Ben, run. It's a trap. Anola falls in the river bangs her head. My poor Enola, how cruelly you've been given your freedom. And Ben cries, for Enola has hit her head on a rock and died. After seeing Enola killed, Ben runs into the river to escape from her master and his dogs. Ben was heartbroken. It could not be consoled as the years went by. He led a secluded life, teaching himself Latin, advanced math, and astronomy. After the death of his father, he took over the management of the farm raising bees, cows, horses, cultivating fruit orchards. 1772, the highly educated Ellicott family led a group of settlers to Baltimore. With our farming methods, I hope we can restore the vital elements to the soil. The tobacco crops have taken from it. One day, well, the Ellicotts, what, one day, well, the Ellicotts, what can I do for you? We heard that you know about a bit about gears and mechanics, and we're having trouble building our mill. Would you help us? Why, yes, if I can. Ben helped with the mill and built a new forge for the settlers. By 1775, the community had grown into Ellicott Mills with a store and a post office. Good morning, neighbors. Howdy, Ben. Got those booklets I ordered on Congress's slavery debates? Sure. You know, Ben's still solving math problems sent in from all the colonies. If you want to know anything, ask Banneker. He's got the best memory ever. That's right, Clem. Benjamin decided to go to Philadelphia to get information on the coming revolution. While there, he helped build cannons that were used in the war. Howdy, you're a stranger here. Yes, Ben Banneker, my, by name, of Maryland. And yours, Richard, Richard Allen. As soon as I'm a free man, Richard Allen paid $2,000 for his freedom. And years later, he founded the African Methodist Freedom Church. I've been to Maryland preaching the gospel. Soon I have my own church. Are you a Quaker? No, but I believe in their doctrines of peace and love. And I dress in a Quaker manner, as you can see. What do you think of the war? I hate war and killing of any kind. I also hate slavery of any kind. I believe stronger things than hate should bind men together. As it is, I build guns, but soon I'll go home and grow wheat for the soldiers. The freedom of America may mean the freedom of our people. Is there another way? If there isn't, I might as well trade in my mind for a musket. Mm-hmm. And so... 
we're going to end our story here for today. And we will pick up on a page here where we go on to talk about the War of Independence, 1776, because Benjamin Banneker was around even before this country was a country, certainly before Washington, D.C. was the capital. That's why he went to Philadelphia. That's where the, uh, the president had his mansion at that time. All right. Meanwhile, all you little children out there, need, it's about time to lay down those little heads on your little pillow, on your little bed. Close those yeah, yeah eyes. Sleep right, sleep tight. Don't let those bed bugs bite. But if they do, you hit them with a shoe until they turn all black and blue. And meanwhile, I'm through with you, but I will be here tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. So look for us again tomorrow night when we do it right. In the meanwhile, peace out. This is Doc Ock signing off.